All right, let's measure some high frequencies. So we know that the architecture of the tiny SA is that there's an IF frequency, the first conversion, the first IF section is at 433.9 megahertz. Um, that means that the LO, in order to measure 0 to 350 megahertz, the LO has to go between 433.9 to 783.9. It's going to take the incoming signal and it's going to increase it by this much. So it's going to add these two together and it's going to give you the intermediate frequency. So it's going to take 0 and add 433.9 to get 433.9 and it's going to take 350 and it's going to subtract that from um, 780, uh, 783.9. So it's not additive, it's subtractive. It takes this and it subtracts this to get this. All right. Um, so how can we use this to our advantage? Um, well, there's a mode in the expert config menu that allows you to take this LO frequency and send it out to the uh, high connector. Okay. It's not being used. This is the low connector. So we could take this and send it out to the high. And it does that while it's operating, okay? So as it's sweeping, it's sweeping this, and that will be available on the high. If you connect a second spectrum analyzer to the high port, you'll see these frequencies being swept, okay? So if we have these frequencies, then instead of doing it, uh, this, min this minus this, we can do this plus this, okay? Or the other way around, we can do this minus this, all right? So we could have these frequencies minus these frequencies, and they end up being 0 to 350 megahertz. Sound familiar? So if we mix the LO that we have available to us on the high port with some incoming signal, we could mix that to a range where the LO can now measure it. That means that if we use an external mixer on the tiny SA, we can measure anything between 434 and 1134. 1134, okay? So that's much higher than the 960, right? So 960 is the highest that the tiny SA can make, can uh, measure uh, natively. Uh, but we can pu pu push it up to 1134 with the addition of an external mixer. All right. So what is an external mixer? All right. An external mixer looks like this. All right. This one is made by mini circuits and it has three connectors on it. And those connectors are labeled on this one. They're labeled different things on different uh, manufacturers. L, I, and R, which stands for LO, RF, and IF. Okay. So this is the RF. Uh, the intermediary frequency and the local oscillator frequency, right? So uh, in this case, we're going to send this to the RF connector. We're going to send this to the LO connector, and we're going to get this on the IF connector, all right? So how do I have this connected? So I have the uh, LO uh, connected to the high, I have the I, the IF, I have that cooked to the low, and then I have some unknown signal here. Well, I know what it is. Um, I have the signal here going into the RF, okay? So we're going to take this signal and we're going to subtract the, the, the uh, LO, and then we're going to display that on the, uh, on the tiny SA. So let's do that. Let me move the camera. All right, so what we see here is a sweep of some signal, and it's an FM modulated signal. Um, so it's very nice. I can change it here. I'll go over to the RF generator, and I will change the um, deviation. I'll make the deviation smaller. Uh, and you can see it getting narrower. I'll put it back to 10 kilohertz, which is where it is. Where, where it was, I mean. Uh, let's see, 10 kilohertz. 
And now I'll change the modulation frequency. And I'm sorry, it's not changing fast enough here. Just a second. There we go. Uh, so here's uh, one kilohertz and all smushes it together. Uh, here's six kilohertz. So we're starting to see it. And 10 kilohertz. It's widened out. Okay. So I think you get the idea. Um, so the frequency that I'm uh, detecting right now is one gigahertz. Okay. So it's above any, um, uh, any, any of the, um, I'm going to glare on this camera when I'm not in front of it. Um, it it's, it's above anything that the SA can do all by itself. It's, it's one gigahertz. Now, how do I get to one gigahertz? What, what setting do I use? Okay. Well, that's going to require a little bit of math. All right. So let's go over. Let's go over here and we've got to do some math. Okay. So if we have one thousand megahertz, all right, and we have an IF frequency of 433.9, right, we're going to uh, subtract those two things. Look at my calculator. 1000, uh, 433.9, I'm going to get 566.1. Uh, and then because it's a round trip, it goes out and back in. It's actually, there's a factor of two involved. So if we divide this by two, we'll get 283.1. And that's what I had the center frequency set to, right? So you have to do a little bit of math um, in order to see it, to, to know where, where to put it. And uh, you'll need to understand why, why the math is what it is. Uh, go, go through the exercise of the subtractions or additions and stuff like that. And uh, you can make yours do this. Now, there are some settings that you have to set. So let's go into the uh, config menus. So there's the uh, configuration. You click on configuration. And then at the bottom, you'll see expert config expert config. Now there's two things you're going to have to set. The first is at the top. It's a little checkbox that says LO output. Okay. If I turn off the LO output, um, believe it or not, it still works because there's a RF switch that uh, is in the circuit and that RF switch leaks. And so it leaks enough to actually make it work. <laughs> so you might not even be, have to turn it on for your application. Um, it's actually quite a high level on this LO output. It's around plus 16 or something like that. It's quite high. So if you don't have it turned on, then it's like minus 10 or something. And, and maybe that's good for your application. But a lot of times the drivers like to be driven hard. So we're going to turn it on and things get bigger, right? So more power available. So I'd probably turn it on is the best thing to do. The second thing that you need to do is click on IF frequency. Now IF frequency is the IF frequency used inside the um, tiny SA. You would think that it would be uh, 433.9 all the time because that's what the uh, filters are. But in fact, um, the software designer decided that um, he can squeak a little more performance out of it by sliding the IF over. If you have a broad filter and you only need to use the right hand side of it, well, you can slide it over a little bit to the left and then you can eke out a little bit more performance on that one edge. If you know that's the edge that's important to you, or you can use the left hand edge and slide things back over. So that's being done automatically inside the, the uh, tiny SA all the time. Uh, he knows where the spurs are, and so he slides it back and forth to get the most uh, most performance available to you. Quite clever. So, in order to use this mode, we need the IF frequency constant all the time. So we need to go into the IF frequency, and we need to set it. We're going to say 433.9 megahertz, and then that locks it down so it doesn't change. So you have to do those two things. Turn the LO on and set the IF frequency to 433.9. And then, uh, then you go, then you're ready to go. And we can measure things between 434 and 1134 megahertz on the low channel by using the external mixer.